I was looking at the slow and sears and those things are expensive and then that led me down a rabbit hole to something called a bro and sear welcome back to clumsy dog what we got going on here is the bro and sear made by uh daddy dutch barbecue we're gonna link his channel and his video on how he made it i'm not gonna show you how high i made it watch how he did it so this is what mine ended up looking like you know again go to his video and honestly he said in his video five minutes and yeah it took me longer to find the bolts in my supply of old bolt bolts which you look at those those look familiar they're like ikea bolts I might not have thought about it, but I'm going to try it out. So the slow and sear are like $80, $90 and up. This was $25 at Home Depot. They give you two baskets and then you just screw them together like this. Again, follow his video. I'm going to do a brisket over tonight. Now, if you watch my other stuff, I'm a big proponent of using the snake method and it hasn't failed me yet. But the annoying part of the snake is when it gets to the end of the snake, you can either awkwardly adjust and add more snakes, more coals to the end of it. And this, I hope, will be better for just tossing on a little bit more charcoal, a little bit more wood or something like that as we go. But I'm going to let you know how hard it is to maintain temperature because the snake method, once you get it dialed in, it really doesn't change. At least that's been my experience with it. But you do end up having to really fiddle and do a lot of weird stuff when you get to the end of the snake. So the dream is that you don't have to do that and you can do like a normal fire pit and that's what the slow and sear and then the poor man's bro and sear will accomplish. But we're gonna find out. I did do a fat snake on this video here, which is the lamb that I did. And it was kind of, just me lumping the charcoal up against the side with a water pan definitely not this and it was kind of okay to maintain temperatures but it did want to run away so i think what's going to happen with this is that it's going to want to be a lot hotter than the snake because again the snake once you have it it's the same charcoal all the way around it really doesn't go up or down too much until you get to the end and then every all hell breaks loose but so I'm going to actually try this here and I'm going to let you know. So it's going to be less about the brisket cook and more about the bro and sear and how to actually maintain temperature and whatnot. So come along, like, subscribe. Let's check it out. So, so this time I'm going to set mine up. I got just some foil over here. If this really works out, I'll do like he did in one of his follow-up videos and cut me a piece of steel there so that when the air comes up, I guess the idea is it comes through here and not through here. And then I'm going to just do a water pan like I always do right there. Help maintain the cooking temperature and all that stuff. But that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm going to get some foil. I'm going to just wrap it over the front here too. I think... And, uh, yeah, let's go trim up a brisket.
Target temperature I'm going to try to go for, I think, is going to be 250, I think. On the snake, I'm able to hit that mark pretty consistent and with not really any flare-ups. And I'm confident to where I even, you know, will go to sleep for two, three hours. And then, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to sleep at all with this because I just don't know how it's going to act. I wish I could have started earlier to kind of see how it would uh, react instead of starting at 10 o'clock, which reminds me I need to start a timer. But anyway, like, subscribe, watch the video till the end, and I'll give you my, my thoughts on it. It's been about an hour and a half now. So far, it's it's been tough keeping it at 250. It wants to run away with it. Um, that could also be because it's uh, about 400 degrees outside. But no, it, it definitely wants to go hotter than the, than the snake, snake does. But once, I mean, but it's been stable at about 260 or so. And it seems to, seems to be doing good. I mean, I poked my head in to see how the, it progressed and it made it, made it over a little, little ways. So yeah, we're at 260 and that's the progress so far. Brisket's looking really nice. And about here, after an hour and a half, looks like that chunk is just about to start, so. Yeah, we'll just we keep going. So far, so good, though. It's the next morning. Keeping the temperature was a struggle. It held at 250 pretty consistent. Um, but anytime the lid would come open and I would need to check on it or if it was time to put the brisket into the boat, um, anytime extra air got into the chamber, it would, it would fly up 325, right? And then it would, um, it was a struggle to beat it back down, shutting the vents and everything to get it back. I didn't, I didn't really trust it and maybe I just need more time with it, but I think that using uh the bro and sear or the s slow and sear um is the better way to do it but i just have to untrain myself from the snake where it is honestly it's very much set and forget it um i do think i've used less charcoal though doing the doing it this way instead of the snake method so when i had to add coals and again this is on me i had my my mitten glove hand and for whatever reason you know i was just tired i guess i, I was like well i gotta push all the the lit coals all the way back over to the right side because that's where i originally started it um and then there was a bunch that didn't get go so when i added more coals i think it lit it didn't just light back i should have just added it where it was already burned up and it would just go back and forth like that and that's probably the way to do it if you need to add more fuel to it. I mean, I've seen the videos online where they just dump it on top of it and they're like, yeah, whatever, and they leave. But I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's such a hot July day uh, and night. Like, I don't, I don't think it got lower than 75, 80 last night. It was pretty warm. It was pretty warm all night. Every time I went outside, it was really hot. But anyway... I think it's just something I need to practice with a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I'm partial to the snake one because that's the one I've been using forever. So it's the one that you know. But I think that this is also good. I think it did a really good job. So I didn't have to move the meat around because the snake is you always have to move it. You have to keep opening and moving it so it's on the other side, right? So if the fire is snaking this way, you want the meat on the other side of it. This obviously I didn't have to move the meat at all. I did open it and I flipped it around. I don't know if I had to do it. I just felt like doing it. Felt right, you know. Um, but from the way it looks, I feel like it did a really good job putting some quality smoke on the meat. Which we're going to open it up here. I'm going to wrap it and we're going to let it rest for about four hours or so.
See, I originally had lit it over here, and then it burned over this way, and it was about right here, and I had my my uh, my mitten, and I was like, in the it's the middle of the night. I'm just like, oh, get all the coals back over here, right? And you see, there's still some little lit ones. So when I put the new coals on it, it kind of lit all of them, and I think that was the beginning of my. It was. It was the beginning of my issues of keeping the fire controlled. What I should have did was, after the fire burned this way, I should have knocked away whatever small coals were small enough to fall through the grates, push the other ones into this pile over here, and then add it so the snake would just, so the little, you know, it would just go back and forth like this. And I think that would be the better way to do it than the way that I did it. So it did a really good job keeping the smoke and I was afraid that the corners would get really burned up um, and that didn't really happen so I don't know which one uh, snake versus bro and sear which one would be the better better way to smoke but they both seem to do about the same but yeah it was a lot because you do the snake you have to keep opening it and you know every couple hours come out and you know move the meat as the snake works its way around so the snake is definitely a lot more hands-on than this is and I think I just really have to get it dialed in so as far as which one I like better I think I like this one better I think I think I like this one better just because um, I mean I obviously had trust issues last night so I didn't go to sleep at all it's always like every 30 45 minutes hour just checking on it checking on it checking on it um, and it did stay at the 250 I don't I, I wasn't able to get it lower than 250 but it stayed at the 250 again until I made that little mess up with the coals so yeah I learned a lot last night about it and it's pretty, pretty, pretty work also it's terrifying when you step on a cicada at 2 in the morning because they scream I've they were going crazy last night. They were going everywhere, but I'm going to get this in the house.